few weeks ago, Netflix released the first look at their new live-action Avatar The Last Airbender show, two mixed reviews. Today, let's look at all four characters and talk about what is and isn't working for them. Hey, what's up, Spencer? My name is Everybody, and welcome back to my channel. If you are somebody who is into books, anime, or anything fandom, then make sure to subscribe because I am constantly uploading reading vlogs, anime reviews, and discussions related to fandom. And with that, let's just jump right in with our main character, our cinnamon roll Aang. The first word that pops into my head when I'm looking at this picture is oversaturated. And now that I've had a little bit of time to kind of step back and think about it and come back to it, I think that part of the reason why it feels so oversaturated is because Aang is standing against a almost all white background. But even saying that, the colors are still way too intense for me. I mean, Aang has just spent the past hundred years being trapped in an iceberg, and yet it looks like he just picked up his clothes from the dry cleaners. I mean, they look way too crisp and fresh and new. Like, it really, really looks like this is the very first time that Aang has ever worn these clothes. Now, before I continue to talk about Aang's costume, I do want to talk about the background real quick, because when I was first showing these pictures to my friend, she told me that she honestly thought that these pictures had been AI generated. And in many ways it does look fake and I think that a really big part of that is because of how they decided to shoot the show. As a part of this show, Netflix decided to create a massive LED soundstage that wraps around 310 degrees, making it so that the creators can project the background in real time as opposed to going in post and putting in the background via green screen the way that we have done in the past. This, in turn, does lead to the feeling of it being artificially generated because 90% of what is on screen is fake. And because it is all LED screens, that adds a lot of light that we are not used to seeing in movies and TV shows nowadays. I mean, we're constantly complaining that there isn't enough light and we can't see anything that is going on. And now we are shooting something with all LED screens, which even when you have dark colors with LED screens, that is still a light and thus is going to be removing any sort of shadows and depth that is going to be there for the characters. Thus, everything looks way too bright, way too oversaturated, and gives the end result of feeling so fake. All right, let's get back to Aang's costume. When it does come to the actual outfit, I do not have much more to say other than the fact that it doesn't look worn at all. It looks brand spanking new. And I know that we don't really ever mention the M. Night Shyamalan first live action Avatar adaption, but something that I can say about that version of Avatar was at least the clothes looked worn and liked they belonged in the world. And actually speaking of M. Night Shyamalan, if we zoom in on Aang's arrow here, we can see that there is a design in it that seems to be kind of like a nod to the arrow that M. Night Shyamalan had in his version of Avatar. Now, looking at Aang's staff, it doesn't look like it opens into a glider, and that makes me really concerned because that is a huge aspect of Aang's airbending, and if his staff doesn't open into a glider, then does that mean that they took air gliding out of the show completely? Were they just not able to figure out the blocking and the filming and just the way to make air gliding like a viable thing, and so they just completely took it out? Because I will be very upset if that is true. All right, let's move on to Katara. First off, hell yeah, we have some hair loopies, which is great. But what isn't great is again how oversaturated and underworn this parka looks. I mean, Katara is from the Southern Water Tribe, which is a extremely poor village. And what is this even made out of? This parka looks like it is made out of blue velvet, which is absolutely not something that the Southern Water Tribe has access to. Nothing about this parka even looks handmade. Everything about it feels factory made and store bought. And it leads to the show feeling so fake. I mean, look how white the whites in this parka are. Look how incredibly pristine this animal fur is. This, again, 
feels like the first time that Katara has ever worn this parka. Honestly, the biggest word that I think that I've seen used to describe these costumes so far is cosplay, which is incredibly true and infuriating at the same exact time. A company that has millions upon millions of dollars in budget for a show like Netflix should not be producing costumes for their characters that are on the same level as cosplayers. I mean, what the hell are you doing with all that money if Becky from my Discord group who works at Joanne Fabrics just for the discount can make a costume that looks just as good, if not better, than that of Netflix? Also, in many ways, I feel like describing these costumes as cosplay feels kind of insulting because many times over, I have seen cosplay that is actually better than what I am looking at right now. And that becomes even more true when we get to Zuko. Oh my god, don't even get me started on Zuko. <sighs> Alright, let's move on to Sokka. First off, let's talk about what he's standing in front of. I am praying to Princess Yue that this is a shot of him in the Northern Water Tribe and not the Southern Water Tribe because the Southern Water Tribe does not have this type of architecture. Canonically, Sokka built a large majority of the architecture in the Southern Water Tribe and that is something that is so important to his character. I mean, Katara might have become the only waterbender in the Southern Water Tribe, but Sokka became the only man in the Southern Water Tribe at the age of, like, nine. So, like, don't take that away from him. Don't do that. Let's talk about how Sokka actually looks. What do I like? Well, I love that he still has the wolf tail, and I love that they kept him with his necklace. His clothes are way less saturated than Katara's, which makes them look more worn and more like they actually belong in world. But beyond that, there isn't much that I am liking with this. There's a lot about this that is still giving the cosplay vibe, the shoulder pads in specific. They really look like they are made out of that foam that cosplayers use to make armor out of. I'm not exactly sure what they were going for with these shoulder pads, but it looks like it's made out of foam and spray paint more than anything. I also do not understand what is going on with all of these little metal rivulets that are all over his shirt. Like we mentioned, the Southern Water Tribe is poor. Poor, poor, Poor. They are not going to be wasting what little metal they have on creating all of these random little circle things on one guy's shirt. That's just not a realistic and accurate use of resources. It does look like he has his boomerang over here though, so that's good. All right, and last but not least, my baby boy, Zuko. I have to say, I like his costume the most, and I think that it is the most accurate out of all four of these. Being black, you can't really oversaturate that, and so much of it does look worn, especially with the shoulder emblem being a little bit faded, does make it look... Like, this is something that has actually been worn and used every single day, as opposed to this being the first time that the actor has ever put it on. That being said, I hate Zuko out of everybody, and that is completely due to his scar makeup. It looks like a middle schooler doing bruise makeup for his community theater using an eyeshadow palette that he stole from his mom. Where is the layered texture burn tissue? Where is the heavy lidded eye? Where is the pain and trauma? Because they reduced his burn so much that he still has his eyebrow. I bet when he takes his makeup off, he isn't even going to have the deformed ear or anything. I bet he isn't even going to be bald. That's right. If they can't go hard on the burn, I bet they didn't even bother to shave his head. And to do this really reduces Zuko's character because when we look at his burn in show, it looks like a fire blast. We can absolutely see what happened and it is impossible to ignore because it takes up the majority of the left half of his face. Zuko wears his trauma on his face. It is impossible not to notice it, but with this makeup, it's something that's so easily overlooked, especially when he has his helmet on. And that, in turn, really decreases the impact of what the Fire Lord did. That, in turn, creates a ripple effect and decreases everything about his character arc, from how dramatic he is in so many situations, to the fact that Katara was willing to give up spirit water to heal his face. 
Now you might be asking yourself, why would the creators do this, especially after they have stated that this show is supposed to have grown up with the fans and that this is supposed to be an opportunity for them to explore darker aspects of war that they wouldn't have previously been able to talk about in a Y7 Nickelodeon show. Why would they not give the fans what they wanted? Go harder into that trauma, explore the aspects of disability that come with it. Zuko probably is partially blind in that eye. Hell, even go so hard as to disfigure him to the point of looking like Two-Face. My answer is that it's a combination of time and money and ableism. After seeing that the reason why Melissa McCarthy's makeup for Ursula in The Little Mermaid was so bad was because her makeup would take too much time, that tells me that big companies like Disney and Netflix aren't invested in putting in the time and money that is required for proper and camera breaking makeup. And obviously having a scar cover the entire half of somebody's face is going to be something that is going to require a lot of time in the makeup chair every single day. And that's time and money that Netflix clearly is not invested in spending. On top of that, I truly believe that Netflix executives convinced themselves that people watching this show would not want to see a character who has such a ugly scar on so much of his face for long amounts of screen time. I mean, I know that I would have loved staring at Zuko's face for hours like that. I know that you would have loved to stare at Zuko's face for hours like that, but Netflix executives are not fans of the show. They only care about money and whatever looks best, and Zuko does not look very attractive. And for a lot of us, that's part of what makes him so amazing. If they made him uglier, that would have what would have really drawn us into it is because the scar is supposed to be so in many ways, this is a massive quote unquote ugly scar. It's supposed to be a ugly scar, but I don't think that Netflix executives think that fans would have liked seeing something so ugly because all they care about is money. When creating shows, executives only care about making money and the way that people look at disabled people's bodies, I wouldn't be very surprised if they convinced themselves that Zuko's scar would be too ugly for people to want to continue looking at and convince themselves that if they had a main character with such a disfiguring massive scar that people would turn off the show instead of being even more endeared to him. And that's so terrible because ugly doesn't equate bad and the fans want the ugliness of the scar. We want it to look bad because we understand what is behind that and the beauty that comes beyond the scar and having a character do these things. Fans and the internet are at a point where we love ugly bodies and a lot of people and executives don't understand that and don't want to go into it because they it, it's hard for them to believe that somebody who has a scar on an entire half of their face could be attractive and beautiful and that we would want more of that. For people who make money off of the way that our bodies look, it can be very difficult and hard for them to understand what we find attractive about unattractive bodies. More than anything, I really wish that they had gone harder with the scar and hopefully by the time the show comes out it will look more intense, but I really don't hold hope for it. So those are my thoughts and opinions on the costumes and makeup for the upcoming live action Netflix Avatar show. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. But besides that, make sure to stay safe and have a fantastic day. Bye.